Caddis Maximus here, this time with a professional wire stripper review and comparison. In my previous video, I did do a review of these ideal strip masters and some comparisons to similar types of die cutting automatic wire strippers. I won't focus quite as much on them as I will just on a general variety of wire strippers that we have here. But to quickly review them, these types of automatic wire strippers like the ideal strip master have two dies and then they clamp on automatically and strip the wire. The great advantage to these is that they don't cut any little strands such as in stranded core wire because when you're using more traditional type styles of wire strippers uh, oftentimes there's improper technique or you're in a hurry and with these ground types of, of jaws that are both in these automatics as well as more manual type wire strippers they're extremely sharp and these just really ensure that you get a nice straight pull and that you don't break or cut through any strands. And they're just so easy to use, say if we were to use this set right here. You just put the wires in, get them aligned to the right die, and if you just need to use a tiny little strip, it's really easy just to pull off just a tiny little nub if you want. Or you can do a large strip, and there is no difference. It just makes it super duper easy. Now, regarding some of these other wire strippers, most styles are pretty similar. And we have a variety such as these Kleins, which are made for Romex or interior household wiring. More professional grade ones like these uh, Garber Benders and some of these Ideals and Greenleys. As well as specialty units such up here, such as these um, Thomas and Betts. We have some uh, older Amps. We have a shark, uh, Data Shark, which is a very... Uh, which was actually an institution, a standard for people who do computer network wiring and that kind of stuff, as well as some other more specialty type of wire strippers. Let's see if I can get this into view here. Now, generally speaking, the first recommendation is to get a pair of wire strippers that actually have two jaws that move past each other rather than come together. Now, the original style, and there are some good ones that work well, such as these amps, what would be considered the traditional style. This set would be considered the traditional wire crimper. If you just need a basic wire crimper and stripper with, uh, for putting on terminals, this is the type of tool that you would get. This is by far the most knocked off style. This amp is actually a high quality version of a basic simple tool. But as you can see, the jaws just come together and they work pretty well for wire stripping. A bigger difference would be in the wire cutters. And you can see I cut a piece of live wire and it just arc the hole right through that jaw, you do need to be careful not to cut live wires uh, with wire cutters or wire strippers for that matter. Now the reason having jaws that move past each other is because they cut wires so much more effectively. We'll take a, we'll use this as an example. This is an older style of the amp and they actually wear aircraft marine pr products ink and it's really neat just as a tool collector to have some of the original style tools where it was the full name such as these GC electronics which were actually made back when there was a general cement company. Now the issue with these types of cutters where they come together is they wear out more quickly and when the jaws start to get some wear they don't come close or they don't come close enough to fully sever the wires so you always end up having some strands. Now these are still pretty good but we still have to squeeze pretty hard. The wire doesn't want to really cut and the jaws are actually in pretty good condition. Now we can see how much trouble I had trying to cut that. There were a few strands, whoop, if this would focus, a few strands that wouldn't cut. And we do see that we do have a little bit of a ding in the jaw there, but that's kind of the point is it's really easy just to get a small ding in the jaw and then they just don't ever you know, want to cut properly and it becomes quite frustrating. Even on nice ones like this, you know, once you have a ding, uh, it's extremely difficult to try to file this down to get that to come back. Now with ones where, say, the jaws come past each other, is even if they do get dinged up, they still sweep past and generally will, speaking, will cut wire even after they're pretty well damaged and dinged up. And when they're really nice and sharp, they just cut wire, no problem, really nice and smooth. Another little thing to look for is to look for jaws that have a slight arc in them, like these green leaves or these Garber benders, because they tend to draw the wire towards the center of the cut, preventing it from getting too squashed and flattened, which of course makes it a little bit more difficult. For example, these Ideals, which are also very nice professional grade wire strippers, have a more 
or a more flat style cutter and we can look here you can see where we get more a bit more of a pinch even with nice sharp cutters rather than one that cuts with semicircular jaws and so that's really when you start getting um, more retentive you will want curved jaws and let's take another close look at these ideals they're actually pretty expensive these are going to be the more commonly available type of professional grade wire shippers they have a combination crimper, crimper or basic crimper and strippers almost all these will have little bolt cutters and we'll talk about that in a second here's another style which is more for coaxial um, it has a different style of crimping where it's a crush type instead of a pin that pokes a dentin in the end of the terminal and then these are closer to the tip the cutters are, at, are excuse me are at the tip and it can make them easier to use than these which were then the, when they're in the back of the jaw because you can't really get these in any kind of tight situations the other thing about these ideals is for their price they just laser etch them and it would be nice if they stamped them pretty much any other good brand like these garber benders are going to be stamped so you never have to worry about any of the the printing wearing off these green leaves are printed on one side but they're indeed stamped on the opposite side and the same thing would go for these clients they're all stamped on the back side and to take another quick look none of them really hit the quality of this amp because these amps you can see they stamp them and then they uh, filled in all the depression with ink and I thought that was actually pretty classy yet another thing to point out among all these kinds of wire st strippers here is while well, these have cutters on the ends but they all look seem to come with what looks like pliers on the tips as you can if this camera would focus and those actually are not pliers they're minor pliers for bending wires around but they are not actually meant for using as say Lyman's pliers the big issue with these types of cutters and let's do an example is when you put in the wire and this is a pretty thick wire a lot of people will crimp and then they'll pull it and strip and that actually worked out okay especially on the larger wire but here's a great example if we can get this to focus one again you can see where it started to cut in and actually did break a couple of the wires just because these are really sharp and it's really hard to pull just absolutely down the center that's why these automatic wire strippers always seem to work so much better is because they pull mechanically in a very precise manner let's go ahead and cut this off now how you're really supposed to use these and it's a little more tedious than most people don't is you're actually just supposed to take and clamp onto the wire that severs the insulation and then you use the plier tips to actually grab that insulation that's why they have those little serrations and then you use the little plier tips wow that didn't work out very well and sometimes it doesn't work out perfectly sometimes you have to cut it a couple times to get the insulation to cooperate and then you use the plier tips to pull off wow of course it would help if I actually was using the right size which is a 14 gauge instead of the 12 gauge position here but you would take the pliers you would just nick the insulation but you wouldn't twist them around or actually pull it off then you'd use the little teeth to grab a hold of the piece of insulation and then it will yank off cleanly as such so that would be the actual proper way to use these and not actually end up breaking any strands as you can see we just clamped down and then pulled the insulation off instead of trying to rake the wire through those razor sharp jaws let's go ahead and talk about some of these other a little bit cheesier automatic wire strippers I have some no names some Garber bender and then some vice grips these were some type of patented design that ran out a long time ago and now everybody makes them and since the patent ran out everybody seems to be doing their own little modifications to the design these are all essentially the exact same system of wire strippers but you can see there's subtle differences in the jaws or how they're mounted these have an adjustable tensioner the these black ones are also interesting because they use hardened steel teeth inserts and i thought that was pretty neat even the vice these more expensive vice grips don't do that but the vice grip does some other things they have heavier lower jaws and then they attempt to put in this adjustable stop here which i thought was kind of an innovative idea and then they put this plastic over the back what's also kind of funny is somehow during the production when they were licensing this they just basically it was a gross error where there's copying text the patents on these expired a long time ago 
And part of the evidence of that is the patents are pending everywhere, including, what is that, W Germany, West Germany. And this is a modern product. This thing was made more decades after the reunification of Germany. And still they have a patent pending in West Germany. So, you know, that's kind of a shows the kind of gross errors that happen. And I always thought that was amusing about these vice scripts. So how these style work is they're just self-tensioning. They put in the you put in the wire and then they just kind of yank it apart. Part of what controls how tight these jaws press is this little ball dentent in the back that hits it against this spring here. And so all you're doing with this knob is you're either tensioning or detensioning that little so it's really soft for lighter wires, or you put it down hard for more tough or thicker wires as such. Now, let's take a look at these vice grips as an example. And the reason that these are kind of handy is because they work in very tight situations. Um, and they can also be used to do things like get into the middle of a wire. Well, it doesn't really want to cooperate with me. They do have their issues, such as right here where it just wants to slip. They're kind of inconsistent. Um, one of the handy things, if you can get them to cooperate, is that you can use them to scrape a little bit of insulation. This is a high temperature heater wire, so that's why the insulation isn't cooperating quite as well. But if you need to make a splice in the middle of a wire or just do some testing that you're going to wrap with some electrical tape, they're great for that purpose. Now these I've gotten tensioned all the way down to their tightest setting. And you can see with this heavier 14 gauge wire uh, with the special high temp insulation that these vice grips they generally work, but they're still having a hard time. They kind of slip. You can see how it pulls the insulation, leaves kind of a, a nasty edge. And so these things work for how cheap they are, but I generally don't recommend them except for maybe as beaters, just because the way they're just squashing on two sides, just like you're using your fingernails and pulling it apart. Also, when you use these on really thin wires, they either won't strip the wire or they'll just break it. Another frustrating aspect. Let's move on to some of these more specialized style. We have these Kleins, and these are known as Romex wire strippers, and we have both the straight as well as the 90 degree. And the deal with, uh, if you're doing an electrician, doing a lot of residential installations, then you'll probably have a set of these because they just make it super easy to run the Romex, grab it with just one pole, and then strip it. And since these are made for solid core wire, you don't have the same type of concerns and issues about pulling at an angle or cutting strands because there is only one big strand. And the worst case is you might scratch the side of it a little bit. So it's much less of a, an issue. The other thing about these clients, which I thought was innovative, is since they're made for cutting Romex, which has three solid conductors, they have this special stair-stepped jaw design to where when you're cutting the flat wire, it will cut the first wire, cut the second wire, and then cut the third wire all in a series. So you're not having to apply a ton of force trying to cut through all three of them at the same time, such as with Lyman's pliers. I see people using Lyman's pliers to cut through them, and you're always putting a ton of pressure. And since these actually cut each wire individually, progressively, it's just a snip and makes it super nice and easy. So I did appreciate the Ford uh, forward thinking design and the same issue the same kind of deal with these straight ones although the straight ones also include a 12 gauge Romex as opposed to just a 14 gauge where the right angle ones are 14 gauge only and you'd have to buy a separate pair for 12 gauge let's go ahead and move up to these little Garber vendors these are the most basic wire strippers. Uh, I mean, I don't know if they get a lot more basic than these. What I kind of like about these wire strippers is because the they do have an integrated cutter, is that they're just so close to the tip, so close to the edge, that you can get into something really tight spaces and just grab a hold of it and, and actually strip a wire. And because of the V-groove, you don't have as much of an issue of worrying about breaking strands. But these cheesy little wire strippers have actually come in very handy just because they're just so compact, and all you have to do is just get the little tip in there to get a wire stripped. How you adjust the size is kind of innovative. They just have this uh, seashell shaped, spiral shaped cam with the different sizes. So if we wanted to cut, say, an 18 gauge wire, we just put the flat right there, adjust it, and now it's set for 18 gauge. If we wanted to cut something much larger, say a 10 gauge wire, we just rotate it up to the top there, and you can see it just stops the little cutter and provide you the appropriate spacing. I also like how positive it is because it's a little flat. You don't have to worry about it self-adjusting or anything like that. So I did want to point out that even simple wire strippers do have quite a few uses. 
Here's another style of a more simple. These are Thomas and Betts. These are right angle strippers, but they work the same way. The design difference is the fact that they have a little slider here with windows that tell you what gauge of wire you're cutting. And then there's stair steps. If we can, if you can see inside there, there's stair steps. So each position that you put it in will adjust how far down the handles go. And then it has a nice little feature where you can set it all the way forward and it'll actually lock the handles together. It also has a neat little uh, uh, feature here for uh, measuring the wire that you're cutting as well as of course an integrated wire cutter. But you can see that these right here would get into just about the smallest space that you could possibly ever need to strip a wire in. We also have some real specialty. These are kind of production style wire strippers. Uh, specifically made for 30 gauge wire and how these are productions they're designed for you to put in a wire cut it to a length and strip it in one motion and then it uses a stainless or not stainless but a hardened steel sheet metal wire stripping element that's held on by an allen screw and, and sandwiched between these two pieces and so you could always replace the actual stripping element and how would, these would work and you can get a whole series of these for any size you just put in whatever wire you need you cut it off and then strip it and it actually works this shape here where it's slightly curved really works surprisingly well you can just cut and strip in one motion and uh, if you're stripping a lot of a particular size wire something like this would just be unbelievable it's much faster than any automatic or because it's custom designed to do what you need it to do which is cut a wire to a certain length and then just pull and strip and so I did want to point those out. I don't know exactly who makes these, but there's the part number on them. And of course, the last, tele, uh, computer network cable uh, wire strippers. These are the more basic ones, or this would be for coaxial, excuse me. You have one uh, short knife for the outer jacket, one long knife for the inner jacket. This is, yeah, a Radio Shack one. And these are pretty common. This would be like the least or the only real non-professional grade tool. As far as more professional grade, as far in, if of, excuse me, including anybody who installs computer networking cable, uh, data, audio visual, that kind of stuff, they'll be familiar with these data sharks. These things were an institution have been for 20 years or more, 25 years. Uh, it's surprising how long they've been around. One was that they were really well made with solid steel pins and uh, dual springs. One thing I've always been frustrated about is they had no latch, so when you'd um, want to use this back end you got to make sure to hold tightly but their distinct advantage is that they have an adjustable wheel jaw here so we can extend or adjust this upper stripping blade for any size wire that we happen to be using it also includes dies for common coaxial cable and they're both for coaxial cable just large and small and so this groove would be what you would use you would get this adjusted for your ethernet cable you just clamp the cable on it and then you spin it around using the, the hand finger and pull it off and then the, you can just strip the wire super easy it does have cutters in them if you need to with a solid metal die below the cutter which I thought was uh, a nice touch also if you notice all the blades are either held in by screws or roll pins so you can replace all the blades in this as well so if you are doing any kind of networking or working with that kind of data transmission or audio visual cable uh, you'll definitely want a data shark because they tend to be the, the best because you can custom adjust them so they work just perfect for whatever wire size you happen to be using and are the next best thing to an automatic wire stripper for network cable, which I've seen, but they are like two to three hundred dollars. It's actually pretty crazy. Okay, I really appreciate everybody watching my real long-winded wire stripper <laughs> review and comparison here. A lot of these strippers do have crimping functions, but I, that's only in a pinch and I'll show how these crimp versus using more professional crimpers such as these Jensen's there's a big difference between crimping a wire terminal using something like these uh, which are over a hundred dollars and crimping a wire using something like these here um, and I will show in a comparison how uh, some crimpers like these uh, make all the world of difference that's why I really count these even though some have crimping functions uh, they're not even close to professional grade crimpers and do not give you that machine grade crimp. So I don't really recommend crimping with these things unless that's just all you need or you're doing some basic stuff. But there's just been so many times where people crimp with those, they think they have a good crimp, and I just go and pull the terminal off. That's the biggest test. If you can 
you have to be able to pull on that terminal hard. And if it does, if it falls off the wire, it wasn't on there very good in the first place. And that happens all the time with these type of crimpers because most people don't realize how hard you have to crush those fittings to actually get them to crimp. Oh, and I almost forgot the last thing is these all come with Imperial. You can get some with metric, but they're special order. But that's the deal is because you're often working electrical panels, so on and so forth, using small fasteners to attach stuff, they tend to include the five or six most common sizes of small fasteners uh, in a bolt cutter fashion. So you have a screw that's a little too long that you can cut it down. These are not made for cutting hardened steel, high strength fasteners, only soft fasteners that would be used in electrical cabinets, etc. And the one big tip, the one big mistake people make is one side of this panel is threaded. The other side just has a pass-through hole. So, of course, you would line them up. It's pretty obvious. Usually, it's the printed side that is the threaded side. You always put the screw into the threaded side. If you run it through the non-threaded hole and then thread it in, what happens is you cut the fastener, but then you leave some flats on the on the ends of the threads that you actually want to use to screw in somewhere and that it doesn't screw in smoothly. You always have to screw it in through the front here, screw it through the front like so, and then when you cut the fastener, you can unscrew it and you can see here, I just cut that fastener and I was able to unscrew it by my hand and if we take a close look, if the camera will try to cooperate, there we go. We can see that it was actually sheared off pretty decently, and because the end of it was supported in a threaded hole, it has it will not give you any trouble actually trying to get it started. So I did want to mention that as an, another important tip. Once again, thank you so much for watching a Caddis Maximus review. I really appreciate everybody subscribing and commenting and liking. And if you haven't subscribed, uh, please do. Bye.